If you're trying to conceive and you suspect that you have fibroids or you've been diagnosed with fibroids, you can be wondering if it's impacting your fertility. Fibroids are common and the impact on fertility varies greatly from person to person and fibroid to fibroid. Today, we're gonna address some of the top questions about fibroids and fertility. Let's get started. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist, helping people build families and learn about their fibroids for over 20 years. Welcome to my channel. This is your trusted source for reproductive health information. If you're coming back, welcome back. And if you're new to this channel, be sure and subscribe so you get my weekly videos all about fertility and reproductive health. There are two other ways to stay in touch. Number one, my Baby or Bust Fertility Podcast. You can listen anywhere you listen to podcasts for interviews and in-depth discussions on important topics. And number two is my weekly newsletter with fertility in the news information, educational content, and recommendations. There's going to sign up for that newsletter in the description below. Now today, we're going to talk all about fibroids. Fibroids are very common. And sometimes they impact fertility and sometimes they don't. We're gonna go over four main topics. Topic number one, what are fibroids and how common are they? Topic number two, fibroids and fertility. Topic number three, diagnosis of fibroids. And topic number four, treatment for fibroids. Not everyone needs treatment for fibroids, but if you do, I want you to know what your options are. Now stick around to the end of the video where I give you three important questions to ask your doctor to help you advocate for your care. Now let's talk fibroids and fertility. Topic number one, what are fibroids? Fibroids are non-cancerous growths within the uterus. They're benign. They're not malignant, but they're benign tumors. And you hear the word tumor and you think cancer. Now, some fibroids can develop abnormal cells and they can result in cancer, but that's very rare. And the definition of fibroid or another medical term is leiomyoma is non-cancerous growths within the uterus. And they are so common, up to 80% of women by age 50 will be diagnosed with a fibroid. Topic number two, how do fibroids impact fertility? Not all fibroids do, but if fibroids are located within the uterine cavity, they can disrupt embryo implantation and be associated with a higher risk of miscarriage. And fibroids are often seen within the wall of the uterus, and they very often don't cause issues. But if they get very large, like over 8 centimeters, over 10 centimeters, they can often cause symptoms, you know, heavy bleeding, bladder symptoms, bowel symptoms, pain, and they can cause difficulty with a developing pregnancy as the uterus grows. Very large fibroids continue to grow as well and can be associated with pain in pregnancy, preterm contractions, um, and other pregnancy outcomes. But the vast majority of fibroids do not impact fertility and do not cause symptoms. But again, ways that they could impact fertility in theory and in practical knowledge are implantation issues, blocking fallopian tubes. So if they grow at a certain place and the egg and sperm are not able to find each other uh, in the fallopian tube, that could impact fertility. And again, location within the cavity can affect implantation and very large fibroids can disrupt the function of the uterus. That being said, many people with fibroids go on and have no issues with conception and no issues with a healthy pregnancy. Topic number three, how are fibroids diagnosed? visually. So with anatomy checkups, could be with a, an ultrasound, could be a hysterosalpingogram, could be on a physical exam. So if you're going in to get your pap smear and your doctor is um, doing a physical exam to feel your pelvic structures, your doctor might say, wow, your uterus is a little bit enlarged. It feels like there could be fibroids there. And then that's usually followed up with visual imaging. Again, ultrasound, hysterosalpingogram, saline infusion sonogram, um, and MRI is sometimes used to really look at how fibroids are in relationship to other structures within the pelvis, but they're diagnosed typically visually with anatomic studies to really, really see the size and location of the fibroids. Topic number four, treatment for fibroids. Now remember, not every fibroid needs treatment, but 
these are the treatments that are sometimes associated with somebody that's having fibroids, especially if the fibroids are causing symptoms. Someone's having heavy bleeding, bladder issues, like frequency of urination, having to get up multiple times in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. Sometimes fibroids are, are pressing on the bladder. Sometimes GI symptoms are being caused by fibroids and location to the large intestine and the rectum. Um, so bleeding, pain, GI urinary issues, um, these things can be addressed medically or surgically. And I know we're talking about fibroids and fertility. So only if your doctor is really thinking that the fibroids could be impacting your chances of getting pregnant, then maybe you would have an intervention. The types of treatment for fibroids really differ on the goals for the patient. If someone's not having symptoms, not having difficulty getting pregnant, and it just happens to be found on a pelvic ultrasound done for another reason, there's usually no reason to treat the fibroid. But if there's an issue, the doctor might recommend either medical treatment, like medicines to try to shrink the fibroid, or surgical treatment. And surgical treatment can be considered sort of non-invasive surgical treatment, and I'll explain that in just a second, or surgical treatment where you're actually doing a procedure and an operation in order to remove the fibroids. In general, medical treatment for fibroids is recommended for someone that's having symptoms, and typically it's used in preparation for surgery to try to shrink the fibroids. The medical treatment is really trying to limit exposure of the fibroids to estrogen because estrogen sort of inflames, enlarges fibroids, whereas if you quiet the estrogen or you give someone high doses of progesterone or something called Lupron or Luprolide, which is a shot that will suppress ovulation, that will decrease estrogen production, that can shrink fibroids leading up to a surgery. There are other medications that are out there. I don't usually give my patients medical treatment because any sort of medical treatment is going to decrease the chances of getting pregnant. So if you're quieting ovulation to limit estrogen exposure, you're not going to be able to ovulate and get pregnant if that's what you're trying to do. And any sort of medical treatment is typically short term and it's not a definitive long-term treatment for fibroid care. And so it's not something that I'm usually prescribing in my practice, but I do want you to be aware that there are medical treatments that sometimes people receive for a short period of time to help with fibroid symptoms. Now, the surgical treatment for fibroids can either be minimally invasive options or surgical options. You think about like an OR and sedation and kind of recovering from that. So there's three main non-invasive or minimally invasive treatments for fibroids that do not involve surgically removing them. These three things are uterine artery embolization, radiofrequency ablation, and focused ultrasound therapy and treatment for fibroids. I've got some great images here, either from the Mayo Clinic or Pace Hospital website that really explain these three options. The first one, uterine artery embolization. Uh, basically, the patient is sedated and asleep, and the thought is that you are putting structures in the uterine arteries to decrease the blood supply of the fibroid. So you're cutting off blood supply so that the fibroid will shrink, basically, because the cells are dying off. So that's an option for treating symptomatic fibroids. It's not recommended if someone is trying to get pregnant or that is their goal in the future because there is some worry that with decreasing blood supply to the uterus, could it affect the function of getting pregnant and carrying a pregnancy? But this is a minimally invasive option for people that are having symptoms from their fibroids. The second option is radiofrequency ablation. And this is where during laparoscopy or sometimes people will do it through um, a vaginal approach, you actually are using heat radio frequency ablation through a probe directly into the fibroid to heat up the tissue, cut off blood supply, damage the tissue so that then the fibroid will shrink with the cells that are destroyed and again, losing blood supply. 
Again, not recommended if someone is planning to get pregnant soon or they're really focused on their fertility. We just don't have a lot of long-term data on it for fertility. The third option is focused ultrasound therapy. Again, using heat and destruction of the tissue through a minimally invasive way. And this image is from the Mayo Clinic. This is something that they, they offer. Again, I would not recommend this to my patients that are planning to use their uterus soon to try to conceive, but I do think that these minimally invasive options are something to pay attention to because we might learn over time that it is a viable option for people that are, are trying to conceive, but I wouldn't recommend it just yet. It might be something that you want to talk to your doctor about, but just get really, really thorough recommendations and pros and cons before you move forward with that and make sure that your doctor is aware of your goals, whether you want to get pregnant in the future or not. So treatment for fibroids, we talked about medical treatment, you know, with medications and pharmaceuticals. We've talked about minimally invasive ways to isolate the tissue and decrease and shrink the fibroid without surgical intervention. And the final option is really surgical intervention. So a definitive treatment for fibroids is a hysterectomy. Of course, that means removing your entire uterus. Now, of course, you're not going to do that if your goal is to get pregnant. There are some people, though, that have such symptomatic fibroids. Their fibroids are just throughout the uterus. I've had people that honestly look like their uterus is pregnant or even larger just from multiple, multiple fibroids. And so when someone is completed childbearing or they're just thinking through all the options, sometimes a hysterectomy is a viable and good option for somebody that's having a lot of symptoms and they don't want to get pregnant. But another surgical option is a myomectomy, and that is just um, removing the fibroid. And that can be done in a couple of different ways. You can use an abdominal approach. So like having a scar on your belly, like a C-section scar typically, and then uh, the surgeon goes in and removes the fibroids. Another is a laparoscopic myomectomy. So just little inc incisions on the belly. Sometimes this is used in conjunction with um, a robot. So people will talk about minimally invasive robotic surgery or laparoscopic surgery. So you don't have the healing process and the large incision on on your abdomen, you have little tiny incisions and the work is really done kind of on the inside of the body. There's usually less hospital time and a quicker recovery with laparoscopic approach. And the last option is if the fibroid that's causing the trouble is in the uterine cavity, you can do a hysteroscopic approach. I've got an image here. So you basically take a camera inside through the cervix uh, and my Clinic patients are totally put to sleep during this. They don't feel anything. They take an amazing nap. And while they're asleep, uh, a little camera is placed through the cervix so you can see, and then you can use instruments through the scope. Very little recovery time, and you're really just focused on the issue, which is a fibroid that's located inside the uterine cavity. You cannot do a hysteroscopic approach unless the location of the fibroid is in the cavity. So it what you do totally depends on your goals, whether you want to get pregnant or not, uh, your symptoms, you know, if it's heavy bleeding or pain, and, you know, what your doctor has to offer you. And the location and size of the fibroids also dictate the options that are available to you. But I hope this was helpful, sort of outlining medical, minimally invasive options, and then finally, surgical options. I really hope that this video has helped you. I think that the big takeaways are that fibroids are extremely common, that by definition, they are not cancerous, and they can impact fertility, but not all of them do. And there are multiple treatment options that depend on your goals and the fibroids themselves, the location and what options are available to you. Now I wanna finish this video, I'm glad you stuck around to the end, with three questions to ask your doctor to help you advocate for your care. Question number one, will these fibroids impact my fertility? So get that answer, there's pros and cons. Just because you have a fibroid, Sometimes surgically removing it can actually cause more harm to the uterus than actually improve your fertility. If someone has a one to two centimeter fibroid, it's in the wall of the uterus, I am going to leave it alone. I am not going to remove that fibroid because trying to get it surgically could actually 
cause harm to the uterus. Now, it totally depends on your personal situation and your personal fibroid. I'm just trying to give you a general example that not all fibroids need treatment. Question number two, what treatment option do you recommend for this fibroid if you think it's causing fertility issues that will you know, impact my fertility. Like your treatment goals are going to depend on how quickly you want to get pregnant and the recovery time and what options are available to you. And question number three, is my pregnancy going to be any different with fibroids in place or after treatment of the fibroids? So sometimes if people have a large fibroid removed and it really is requiring an incision on their uterine wall that goes all the way through to the inner layer of the uterus, to the cavity, some doctors will say, I really don't think it's a good idea for you to labor when you're ready to deliver your baby because there's a risk that that incision might rupture in labor. And so sometimes people will have myomectomies or surgical removal of the fibroids and they need to know from their doctor, hey, does is this impact my ability to have a vaginal delivery or are you going to recommend a C-section in the future? If you found this video helpful, share it with a friend that has fibroids and you know that she is nervous about how this impacts her fertility. Like this video, comment with questions that you have. Be sure and subscribe to this channel so you get my weekly videos all about reproductive health. And until next week, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples. Thank you.